Sorry about that. Good afternoon and welcome to the Souter Alumni Center on the campus of Emporia State University as we formally introduce the seventh head coach in Lady Hornet basketball history. My name is Brett McLaughlin and I am the Director of Athletic Marketing here at Emporia State. In a moment, I will give the podium over to the Director of Athletics, Kent Weiser, who will say a few words and will introduce you to our new coach. After coach gives his opening statement, we will take a few questions from the podium before breaking off into interviews at the backdrops in the back of the room. I would like to remind everyone to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices they may have with them. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce the Director of Athletics, Kent Weiser. Thank you all for, for being here. Wow, what a, an exciting day uh, for ESU athletics, for ESU women's basketball, and to have this room filled uh, really means a lot to us. So thank you all for, for coming today. Back on March 12th, we begin a journey uh, to find a new coach for our women's basketball program. And, uh, and I'm very happy to say that that, that journey officially ends as expected, there, were, there was interest from scores of qualified candidates. Uh, many thanks to all of those people with interest who had interest in our job. And my sincere thanks to uh, some people in our athletics department, our office manager, Jennifer Collins, Associate Director of Athletics, Don Weiss, and our Deputy Director of Athletics, Christy Byer. They helped me uh, identify and vet through more than 130 candidates. As a matter of fact, we had so much fun doing that, we thought we'd just keep doing it and just switch to the men's program. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll go into that here uh, starting tomorrow. But, uh, but today I'm excited to introduce uh, our next head coach uh, of such a tradition-rich program as Emporia State. He's established himself as such a skilled coach, a great recruiter, and a very, very talented leader. It is my pleasure to introduce new Lady Hornets basketball coach, Toby Wynn. Thank you. Um, it's a very, it's a very obviously special day um, here, here in Emporia, Kansas. I'm extremely humbled and very honored to be, uh, to be the next head coach at Emporia State University. Um, I want to give a thanks to uh, President Garrett, obviously Kent and Christy, you know, along the search process. Uh, it, was a, it, was, um, it, was, it was quite a journey to get here, um, but I'm glad I'm here. I know the history of the program here. I'm very, very familiar with it. I've been, um, been familiar with uh, the program all the way back to when Coach Schneider was here, and, uh, and Jory has done an exceptional job as well. Um, I learned, uh, you know, I learned a long time ago, if uh, something's uh, not broke, don't fix it. And there's not, there's not anything that's broke right now with this program. And so uh, I think it's just a matter of me coming in here and maybe just implementing a little bit of a new philosophy of basketball, maybe a little bit different style of play that some people might have to get used to, but that's okay. Because the bottom line is, uh, these girls sitting here in the room with us today in front want to win, and I want to win too. And winning is the key component here, and that's what we intend to do. Um, I want to extend a special thanks and gratitude to Kyle uh, uh, Unruh, the assistant coach. Um, I really appreciate uh, all he's done in his time during this transition for, for our players um, to make this transition so smooth, and along with Brooke and, and Marissa too as well. Um, I'm very fortunate to have gotten into this game under the direction of Jim Littell at Oklahoma State University. He took me under his wing uh, 14 years ago and has been a mentor of mine um, for a long time. And so I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't without him as well, um, also. Uh, once again, though, I'm, I'm extremely honored. I'm humbled. I'm excited to be here. I know, I know that uh, this is a, a great program with lots of history. And, um, and we want to protect the tradition of Lady Hornet basketball, but we also want to elevate it, too, as well. So thank you for, thank you for uh, having me. I look forward to being the next coach here.
time we'll take a few uh, questions here for Coach Wynn. If you do have a question for us here at the podium, please, uh, as you get acknowledged, please state your name and your affiliation so he will know uh, who he is talking to and get introduced in that way. Do we have any questions? Coach Stephen Coleman with the Emporia Gazette. Um, what was your reaction to you know, learning about this position? Was it something you wanted to jump into right away or did it take some prodding to put your name in the hat? Uh, I don't think it took very much prodding at all. I think as soon as I saw the jobs open, I said, I saw the application process and I sent Jennifer an email and um, and just uh, started the process. I, I just like I said, I, I've known Jory for a long time, I've known Brandon as well, and I just know the history of it. And so when an opportunity like this comes your way, I think uh, I think uh, you try to do the most to make make it happen where you can be somebody that can step in here and do this job. And um, you know, I feel like I can and I want to, and it's the right time for me. And so um, I just went for it right away. Greg Ray with KVO. Yeah, I met with the girls earlier and I told them, I think that's probably one of the biggest things, uh, Greg, is that the people want to know, you know, or the players want to know how we're going to play, you know, what's our, you know what are we going to do. But I think uh, I think over the years our teams have been uh, teams that have played fast and uh, been pretty furious on offense and created a lot of chaos on defense for other teams too as well. But I'll get to know these players and watch them, watch them in workouts and uh, – and see what you know what their skill sets are, and then we'll devise the best plan we can to be successful in, in whatever style that you know that, that, that we need to be. And uh, you know we'll do it that way. Uh, just because the bottom line is, as I told them, we just want to win. We're gonna, we want to be able to find the best way to do that. I do have some, some connections with a few of them in here for sure. We kind of talked about that previously, but um, being being a lot, a majority of them probably over here on the eastern side of the state, being on the western side of the state, you know, it's a little bit different. Uh, we didn't we don't venture over in this part of the state to recruit that recruit that much. But obviously, I mean, when you're in Kansas, you you're familiar with all the best players, no matter where they are. And um, I think you just try maybe on location wise, you try to recruit some of them unless you have a direct in uh, to some of them. So uh, I, you know, I've I've, I've been familiar with them, just seeing their names and the success they had individually as players. Um, and I look forward to, you know, to being around them in practice and, and in workouts and stuff like that and, and really seeing their skill level. Coach, when you say you were familiar with Brandon and Jory, what kind of connection did you have with them or, or yeah. previous interactions did you have with them that kind of led to this? Yeah, uh, Brandon's dad, Bob, actually coached my mom in high school. Um, <laughs> so I have a... I have a connection with Brandon that goes all the way back to when we were kids. Uh, his dad, Bob, grew up in Daresette, Texas, and uh, my family's from, from Booker and Follett, Texas, and so it's it's all part of Lisbon County. So I've been playing basketball with Brandon and Brett for a lot of years, and uh, so just knowing, knowing them that way. And I think, uh, you know, just get to know Jory through Brandon is probably the thing that happened the most, and so that's probably the connection where it came from. Um, you know, I've talked to them just to, just briefly a little bit. We haven't had a whole lot of time. Those guys are busy right now. It's a big recruiting month for them uh, right now. But uh, they've just said that the, this place is just just incredible. Uh, the support that they get here at Emporia is just uh, second to none. And uh, there's there's nothing like playing a game in White Auditorium. And uh, and I've been here for a few state tournaments, uh, but never been here for the Lady Orange game. And so you know, I'm excited about uh, stepping on the court for one of those. Uh, but uh, they just rave about uh, the community support and then just the work ethic of the players. The players that they get here and they're just the competitive will that they have to win is something that they always talked about. And, and that's something that we've been successful with with, uh, with my teams in the past at Seward County. And so I just want to try to continue along that same path. Coach, you've been at Seward for 13 seasons. Was it kind of just getting into your own kind of professional career? Were you starting to wonder or want to maybe try to take that another step forward and, and I think so. I think I finally reached the point. Uh, 13 years there, um, being being at the community college level and having the success that we've been able to have, um, you know, you want to try to always try to advance. I don't think I want to get stagnant, you know, and just kind of get in the same mold. I feel like I could do that. I think this gives me an opportunity to, you know, to move up to a different level and compete in MIAA, which is the best conference in the country when it comes to women's basketball. And 
Um, I, I, you know, I, you know, I welcome that challenge. I look forward to it. I, I know it's going I know it's tough. I know it's a tough league, but I know we have tough players, and I know we have players who commit to win. And, and uh, so, and I think just that that whole dynamic was something that really enticed me to be able to make that move and want to make that move, uh, you know, as well. Yeah, if you came and watch our teams, uh, you know, we, we press quite a bit. You know, we play pretty fast tempo. Um, you know, the way the game's evolved here recently in the last few years with the three-point line, we utilized the three-point line. Our team led the nation. We set an NJCA record for most three-point field goals made in the season this year. And we made 25 threes in one game, and we shot a lot of those. Uh, but I think that's where the game kind of evolved to. But that's how my team was this year. I mean, that was the style of how we played, and it fit good for what we did. Um, so traditionally, we've, we've kind of been that way. And uh, it's been something that's worked for us. Um, and, I, and I don't know that it's going to work here until I get in here and get to see, you know, see our team practice and play and compete and those kind of things. But over the years, we've been a team that's played more up-tempo um, and just really try to create a lot of turnovers on defense and, and uh, try to give our players a lot of freedom on offense to be able to make plays on their own and, and have, you know, have the ability to do that, kind of open up the floor a little bit for them to be able to utilize their skill set too. Coach Steve Sauber with, uh, I guess I'm with KVOE. Um, <laughs> look at your roster. A lot of Kansas kids, Oklahoma kids, Texas kids. Three girls from Mozambique, I believe. Yeah. What's going on there? Um, when I first came to Seward County in 2004, we had we had two players from there. We actually had Delinda Ingulela and Flavia Asanieta. And um, they had both come there. And actually, Delinda came here to Emporia State for one year right after, right after Seward County and she played here for Brandon. Um, but uh, those two girls, just being back home, uh, just told us about other players from there. And so we just kind of started a pipeline of recruiting players from Mozambique, Africa. And uh, Dia Linda is now a, a coach for the national team back home in, in Mozambique, and her and I are close friends still, and I just talked to her, and, and uh, we just kind of asked, like, who's the next best player coming? And uh, that's just kind of the, the, the pipeline that started. I had 11 players from there over the years. And so we had, you know, we had a large amount of players that came from there. But uh, for those girls, just an opportunity of a lifetime to come to the United States and play basketball. And, and uh, they all were very successful and, and made the most of it. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Richard Bennett hit the fan for 100 years. But <laughs> obviously, you had a great season this past season. Do you expect to bring any of the players from Last team transport. Yeah, honestly, we only had four sophomores on four sophomores on this last team, and our, our two-time All-American she signed early with Colorado State, and so uh, and then we had another girl that signed with Oklahoma City University, um, and, and so uh, you know our players right now that that uh, that that we have there is probably not going to happen. I mean, we have we think we have one scholarship here uh, to to maybe use and utilize, um, but at the end of the day, when I look at this roster and I talk to Kyle and. I see our players right now. I think we have a really good nucleus of what we need right here, right now to win. And so it's just a matter of uh, you know getting in the gym and starting starting to create some uh, chemistry and uh, feel for how we're going to do things and, and go from there. And, and uh, you know if we can add a piece here at the end, we may add a piece and and just uh, just kind of go from there. Any other? All right. Well, once again, I would like to thank you for coming out. Um, if you would like to speak with Coach Wynn, uh, anyone from the media, we have Michael Harris uh, back here in the back who will be directing you to two different uh, backdrops. Um, so we'll kind of split groups there. And we can do some individual interviews there um, at those two backdrops. So again, thank you for coming out. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're excited to see you um, as our Lady Hornet season begins uh, next year. So thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it was very difficult to be quite honest because we were my team was playing in the national tournament at that time down in Lubbock, and so then when this thing all kind of started transpiring, and uh, fortunately for me, Kent reached out to me and he was very, uh, very good about saying, "Hey, coach, um, I want you to know that uh, I just want to visit with you when your season's over." And so I felt a little peace about that uh, that he was going to be able to do that for me. So um, you know, I think that was probably the biggest thing. Now that you're here, 
I mean, to see all these people here, what that make you feel today as you got introduced? Uh, I honestly it makes me feel just I'm just kind of like beaming with pride, honestly, to be the be the coach here. I mean, just seeing all the people that come to support this thing is just absolutely incredible. I mean, it just gives me uh, gives me uh, kind of an energy to want to get out on the, get out there and start start going to work. I mean, I want to go find uh, we have one scholarship left and go find another player to bring in here to finish out finish out our roster and uh, just kind of energizes me a little bit to see all the support and everybody that comes in here. What do you know about your your roster and your team so far? I know you were just introducing yourself to them yeah. half an hour ago. So what do you know so far about this team? Yeah, I know this team. Uh, you know, fell in some hard times this year with uh, some injuries early in the season. I think that was the one thing that that happened to them. Um, but I think it maybe enabled some of the other players to grow a little bit more. So I think with the players that are coming back off of injury, and I think that uh, the ones that we have that were able to step in there and compete and play, I think there's obviously a great mix of players coming back. And so I, I look at the roster, and it's something that gets me excited about coming in here and coach. I think that's one thing that made the job so enticing, honestly, too, as well, was that the roster is so good. Uh, and so I look forward to working with those players to come back and then getting to know you know everybody in general. Coach, having been with some teams that have had success before and gone to the national tournament and played at that top level, you know, coming into a, another program with similar expectations, does it almost feel like just a, a change of the a change of address and other than that that everything expectation wise is Yeah, I, I believe. I mean I don't think our expectations are any different, honestly. Like uh, you know, our expectation in Seward County was to try to win a national championship. I think the expectation in Emporia State women's basketball is to try to win a national championship. That's clearly been done in 2010. I think that's something that every team since then has probably strived to do. And our team's going to be no different. I mean, we're it's something that this team's going to want to do and I'm going to want to do as a coach as well. Toby, if I could just follow up on that a little bit. You mentioned the history of the program and how strong this tradition is. That's a great dynamic to come into, but there also is some pressure associated with that. How, how do you deal with that, that kind of pressure? Yeah, I mean, when I went to Seward County, I followed a guy that was 418 and 62. In the 13 year, 14 years previous before I got there, and uh, Coach Littell built had built a monster, and and I know that Jory and Brandon have kind of done the same here too as well, and Cindy even before them also. Um, and I think it's just one of those things where you just gotta you just gotta put your head down and and uh, start start being a grinder and just get the players in here that's going to take to to win. I think at the end of the day you gotta have players that can make plays, and so you gotta be able to recruit and win those battles. Uh, but the, as far as handling the pressure, I mean, uh, winning winning uh, winning makes that a whole lot easier. Um, I know it's going to be difficult, but uh, I think that's something we've done our whole career. I mean, since I've been in coaching, is be able to be able to, be able to win, and uh, I think that's uh, I think that's something these players hopefully resonate with too. What specific things can you draw from on, from that first year at Seward County when you took over the gym that you bring here? Yeah, I think uh, I think probably the biggest thing is just trying to trying to make sure you put your stamp on everything, you know, kind of right from the get-go, honestly, and, and uh, just making sure you, you know, when you make that decision, like you stay committed to it and, and you just go with it and, and, you, and you trust that uh, you know what you're doing and you're doing the right thing. You know, I know these guys had a, had a great situation in place here, and Jory, Jory did, and, and Kyle as well, and I think that uh, there's a lot of things here that will stay the same and won't be much different. To be quite honest, and I think probably, probably at the end of the day, the biggest thing that changes is maybe the style of play on the floor might just be a little bit different. Um, and that happened a little bit back then in, in, uh, in 05, 06, and it might happen again you know, next year as well. What have the last, I don't know, 30 days been like for you and, and this job hunt? Well, it's been very hectic, as you can imagine, but, but also uh, having the interest in this job and in Emporia State was really flattering in a lot of ways and really made us think that we've got to do a good, thorough job here because the program means so much to so many people. It has, uh, has just been a, a staple of, of Emporia, so uh, it's been exciting, and uh, and I'm glad the way that that uh, it ended. Here. What kind of pressure do you feel in making this hire, knowing how good this program has been for so long? To make sure you pick someone who a understands that and b continues that. You bet. It's certainly all of our programs are important, but yeah, when you have one that has reached the level and maintained the level of success. Um, it does bring a little bit more on you, but it just focuses you. I think it makes you sharp to uh, to make sure you understand that, and, and the people that helped me, Christy Meyer and Don Weiss and Jennifer Collins, uh, to gather their opinion. Um, you know, you just do the best that you can. Find the who you're comfortable with and who uh, other people are saying good things about. And, and both of our former coaches had uh, had great things to say about Toby. So uh, I feel really good about it. So what did you see out of Toby that really, you know, nailed it down? Uh, several things uh, with Coach Wynn. You know, he's so familiar in our state and in the central United States um, from a recruiting standpoint. 
he recruits the same kind of student athletes uh, that we do, that are that are uh, Division One quality, that are high academic uh, kids. His teams out there have, have enjoyed great success in the classroom, uh, and just that respect level that uh, that he has from our state, our regional high school and, and college coaches. And also, he, he knows what it's like to take over a program that has been very good. He did that in Seward County. Um, and so I just felt comfortable with that. Not, not many coaches would bring that that experience with them to, uh, to know what it's like to take a, a program that's in good shape and get it in better shape. How important was it to hear those words from Jory and Brandon, though, about him and, and that they know about him, that has to mean a lot to you. It, it does. Any, you know, when you get coaches, too, that, that, and I've been in the business a long time, and coaches that I know and respect, uh, you know that they're not doing it just to just to help their guy, that, that they are doing it to help our program and to help me make a good decision. And, you know, this program, they built it, uh, Brandon Snyder and Jory Collins, and so they don't want to see it. Uh, uh, go downhill and, and uh, you know lose the ground that they gained. So I really respected their their decisions, and they they didn't. I didn't ask them to make the choice, but I I did ask them to, to help me identify people who uh, they knew uh, who would fit in here. And, and uh, yeah, I said we had 12 phone interviews and, and uh, three in-person interviews. So and, and many of them could have done it uh, and had success, but I just felt most comfortable with Coach Win. And you said you started with how many candidates at the beginning? Uh, 130 some. I don't know. I lost track after 130. Uh, and so uh, Jennifer Collins kept that up for me. So, uh, uh, but you know, more than just the number, it was the scores that were really qualified for the job. And that's what took time. And some of them, as Coach Wynn, were still playing. And so that put us uh, back about a week to, to let those teams that were in the, uh, you know, the, the NIT and the, and the NCAA tournament and the junior college tournament finish their seasons. Thank you. Uh, all right, so what has this process been like for you and, and for the team to, to go through a coaching change? Um, it's been kind of nerve-wracking. You know, you don't really know what you're going to get, but Kent's been very, very helpful with us. Kyle's done a great job taking over, and, you know, we just kind of relaxed. We've just gone back to work and just kind of waited to hear. What's it like for you, the coach that recruited you, now gone, you're getting this new coach, guy you've never met probably. What's that been like? Um, you know, it's been kind of sad. You know, Jory was awesome. I loved everything about Jory, but I'm excited to get this next coach in and uh, get the ball rolling, and I wish we could practice tomorrow. <laughs> What did he say to you when you guys actually met today for the first time? What did he tell you? Uh, he just kind of introduced himself, and then he just kind of told us about his philosophies and his background, and just that he wants to come here and win just as much as we do. What did it sound like his philosophies were? Um, basically what he said during the press conference, just he likes the pressure, he likes to uh, shoot a lot of threes, just win ball games, basically. You like that up tempo style, or you think you'll you'll enjoy that? Yeah, I do. I think it fits great with our team. We have a lot of athletic players, so I think it's what about shooting the long ball? A lot of threes. Sounds like he likes shooting it. Yeah, me too. So it'll be a great fit. <laughs> Today and I guess the last month has been like for you and for the team. Uh, it's been a little stressful, but also really exciting. I mean, we were excited to find out who our new coach was and hopeful that it was going to be somebody really good. And uh, when we found out today that it was Toby Wynn, we were really excited because he's been at Surrey County for 13 years and been really successful there, and we're happy to have him. How much did you know about him before you found before he introduced himself? Yeah, so uh, I've heard some really good things from a lot of other people. Um, I actually went to a camp out there when I was in junior high, and I really liked him when I was at camp when I was younger. And, I always thought he was a really good coach, and just hearing his name pop up again, it was like, oh, cool, I get to play for a coach that I've actually like been to camp at. So, yeah. What's it been like juggling the excitement of a new coach, but also dealing with you know, Jory leaving, the guy that recruited you, the guy that you've known for so long? What's that been like for you? Uh, you know, when we found out Jory was leaving, it was really sad. We all loved him. He's such a good coach, but at the same time, like he deserves to be where he's at, and uh, we wish him all the best of luck at KU, him and his family. And 
like I said, we're happy to have Toby win. Uh, we're going to still have a really good year next year. We're here to win. We're here to play good. And that's what he said, too. Like, the bottom line is he wants to win, and that's what we want to do, too. So should be a good fit. Sounds like he likes to shoot a lot of threes. You, yeah. you like that philosophy? <laughs> I do. I like shooting threes, but I mean, like he said, whatever philosophy he needs to put in place, whatever game plan he needs to put in place for our team, he's going to do that. I think that's really important that he'll just do what's best for us. How badly do you want to get on the floor right now and just see what he's like? <laughs> really bad. <laughs> really bad. But I think I have a couple weeks left on release. And and so I'm just uh, excited to finish up this postseason and get him in and get a, get him watching our team and get chemistry with him and all of our players. So. Has he talked to you being one of the you know, older leaders of this team or any of the others about this is what I need to know or what he needs to find out? Like, Have you had a session with him to sit and go over this team a little bit more? No, I haven't yet. I think when he officially gets here, I think he's going to meet with all of us and get to know us better and give us a chance to get to know him better. So I think that'll be here in the next week or two. Then we'll get a good plan going.